Oh, uh, well, again, uh, welcome, uh, you know, to our weekly press conference, and glad you all came back out during the bye week. Uh, last week, uh, again, um, you know, as I said at the beginning of the week, uh, I think we got everything that we wanted out of that game um, uh, with South Alabama. I, I know a lot of our fans wanted us to go in and and uh, play and just play and play to the win, but I, I felt. Uh, that, you know, we wanted to win, and if we could have got up, we would have maintained, but we needed to play as many players as we could so we could find a team uh, for these next five games as we press towards the SWAC uh, championship. Uh, last week we played up uh, 52 total players, 22 freshmen and uh, sophomores, and out of that 22 that played or additional 30 that played, we was able to find – six, seven guys that will be able to help us for the long haul and keep us on track. So uh, I know a lot of times uh, when you play in these games, everybody, you know, everybody want to win. We use, the, we use those games as uh, opportunities to win, but more important, barometers for where the program will be as we continue to build. Uh, you know, as I told the team going into the game, uh, South Alabama uh, is a revenue game where we get an opportunity to go play on a, uh, on a larger scale, scale with the FBS, but more importantly, we got a chance to get a lot of young guys reps, and we wanted to go in and do just that. So, uh, you know, I got some calls about the guys being on the sideline with the shoulder pass off. Um, don't be alarmed. They knew what they, was that task. No morale is lost from that game. We want to win the SWAC, and that game had nothing to do with what we needed to do with winning the SWAC. Uh, it was uh, kind of unfortunate to have a game like that in the middle of the road as you uh, come off a big win from Alcorn, but it served a purpose, and now we're back into swag play, and uh, every week counts. All right. First of all, Coach, I want to let you know, happy anniversary for one year of you being steady in this shift. One year. Oh, yeah. Just talk, just talk me through that, this one year, you know, being the head coach of Alabama State. You know what? Um, you know, it's, it's one year, but a lot of times uh, – of being in this position, uh, you know, as they say, much is given, much is required. Uh, you know, our fans, once I took over the program, I guess they felt that, you know, water was going to turn into wine immediately. And, uh, you know, and I, as I continue to remind them is that we wanted to plant a seed that can continue to grow. I didn't want to shoot up uh, the, as they say, the steroid approach with all these junior college guys. I wanted to get program guys uh, with freshmen in, and we've been able to do that, and we have a lot of guys from great programs that's playing for us now. And one year is it, just uh, gives me an opportunity to look back, uh, you know, through last year and where the program wa uh, was at that time when I took over and now where we are. You know, one year ago, we was 0-5 when I took over the program. I uh, had three conference loss uh, going into uh, Texas Southern, I believe. This year we're one and one in the, in the uh, overall SWAC conference and one and zero in the East. So uh, if you use what what we're uh, working for as a barometer, I think we're doing a pretty good job. But when you uh, look at it overall, you know it's uh, a situation where we have a lot of great talent in and that that will uh, build for the future. Well, the, the biggest thing is self-scout, you know, know thyself. That's in any time you're in any kind of contest. So we've taken, again, uh, you know, the last couple of days of seeing uh, our tendencies, identifying our tendencies, what are, what are some of the things we can do better, personnel. Uh, do we have the right guys in the right spots to run those particular schemes? Because we're down now to the point where uh, we have a lot of guys that's injured, so the personnel that we have is all we have. So we have to find the scheme to match what we have. Uh, then as we move to A&M, you know, those guys are feisty and they've been doing a lot of good things, a lot of uh, close ball games. Uh, so they've gotten better from, uh, from a year ago as well. So, uh, you know, as we move forward, you know, uh, and we understand that we press towards uh, win on a conference championship, A&M is in the way. So we have to go in with that understanding that not only they're in the way for the conference championship, we all know the, the magnitude of this game in Magic City. This, this, uh, this is one of the biggest games that's played in the state, and we're going to approach it that way with the understanding that we, we have to win for our student body, we have to win for our alumni, and we have to win for ourselves. Coach, going into uh, your second bye week, what was, how are you approaching 
different going into this bye week than it was last time. Where you've had a lot of injuries and you're really trying to reevaluate your team. Now going forward, you get into the meat of the schedule. How will this bye week be a little different? Good question. Uh, the first bye week, we were reassessing personnel to re-identify personnel. Now the personnel that we have is all we have. So now we have to reassess the scheme. Can they do what we're asking them to do? Or do we change the schemes? Because what we have is all we have. And uh, that's what we'll have as we move through these five SWAT, uh, SWAT games. What's the challenge in getting a team ready for the match of the classic with the right of the magnitude of the game? Especially with the bye week before that. What's the challenge in keeping them focused on just focus on you guys this week and then keeping them focused on playing the game? You know, again, uh, it's putting it before them and making sure that you structure everything that you can minimize the time that they have running around with, uh, you know, all the things that go into a game of this magnitude. You know, your phone rings off. Uh, you know, people I hadn't even talked to since last year this time. Uh, you know, again, coach, we want to support you. Do you have a ticket? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, so they back. So, you know, it's one of those situations where we, you know, we continue to, even with myself, turn the volume on the phone all the way down. If it's that important, you'll leave a message. Uh, and then with the players, making sure that we meet as much as we can, practice as much as we can within the 20-hour rule so we can don't let them be idle in their thoughts about what we're going to do a week ahead. You can burn yourself out uh, thinking about what lies ahead two weeks from now, and we don't want to do that. We want to put the focus on ourselves and continue to work, 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 and as we get closer to the game, then we stroke the fire to get it high. I mean, we got the great thing about it. We have uh, Kadarius who have come along and added a threat of throwing the football and managing the game. We have DJ who, who still has, a, has the experience, can, can manage the game, can run as well, uh, as well as throw. If you was out there last week, we'd have played you. We wanted to play everybody that we had that was eligible to play to see what you got. And uh, it wasn't that we were changing guys out because we – uh, didn't think the guy in front of them was doing a good job. We wanted guys to get game experience. Uh, we played uh, we played the kid in Caboodle. We played everybody but the trainers. Going forward, do you think um, with you playing so many people, I know you said earlier you were able to assess the ones and you played a lot of freshmen. You said about six of them were going to be able to help you in the future. Um, do you think they will help you in, in spot duty or do you think they will be a, a well, our future is next week, <laughs> and their future is next week. Those six guys I identified, uh, and it may be eight, based on, you know, just going back looking at they may can't play 20, but they can play 15 plays. They will be playing in some form or fashion these next five games. That's how close the future is. Now, we had some guys that showed that they, they're still a little green. They're really not there yet. They can't help us yet. Not that they're not going to be great football players. They're just not there yet, so we'll put them back in the maturing uh, portal, and then we'll hold them there. And then these other guys, we'll bring them up, and, they, and it's great to be able to have uh, one or two guys come in and, and add some depth. And that's one of the things you talked about early in the season was the depth, of course, of course, on offense and defensive line. Is that the most important thing you're looking for going into this bye week is just improving on that depth? Improving on the depth now that we identified the guys – Teaching, teaching them the schemes that these are, you know, you're not running off cards on the scout team anymore. What is the conceptual uh, information that we're trying to get across in the play? Uh, what, what, what are the angles? What are the triangles that we're trying to create with your play? So now they'll come to this, to the other end of the field where they'll get live reps with the first and second team so that we can get them ready as we move forward. It, it, look, you got to have a short memory in this. We're going in 0-0. We're going in. I'm going in just like I'm trying to get that first win. So you can't get caught into, you know, the records of what you did in the past because I'm quite sure nobody here in Hornet Nation cares about what happened last year. They only going to care about what's going to happen next Saturday.